Alright. So I want to see what this fella has to say here. Um, Franciscan Friars. Ave Maria. I don't know what that means. Don't care. All Christians profess their belief that Christ will, or already has, returned. But what that exactly means and how that will, or already has, come about can vary greatly. One of those differences is in the understanding of the thousand years reign of Christ spoken of in the book of Revelation. How can we rightly interpret this in light of other scripture passages? Ave Maria. Again, I don't know what Ave Maria means and I don't care, but... What I do care about is this idea of a thousand years reign of Christ spoken of in the book of Revelation. Now look, I've read the book of Revelation. I, I read it several times a year. I've read it several times a year for the past 20 years. And perhaps, uh, and it, what to me what's fascinating is the more you read it, the simpler it gets. It's incredible. It really is. And then, of course, you have to read the rest of the Bible in order to connect the dots with everything uh, and ob you know it's obvious when you connect the dots you realize you know what the Bible's telling us the same thing over and over again and it's not rocket science it's very simple and that is that we have an escape from this world just like Moses was led out of Egypt we have one that will lead us out of this wicked world into a world of everlasting life just like Moses was prom was um, uh, there was was given a promise of the promised land so also are we through Jesus Christ given a promise of the promised land which is eternal life where there's no more pain no more sorrow no more crying no more death so we see example after example all throughout the Bible and even in our own lives of how wicked this world is and uh, how we have an escape and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ and then he's coming all right so what when Jesus was here he fulfilled all the necessities that it would take for us to inherit eternal life and he promised to come back and to take us to lead us out of the this wicked world and into the promised land which is eternal life which is the new heaven and new earth the holy city of God the new Jerusalem all right. and then all the wicked is going to be destroyed so you put all the pieces together you connect all the dots and you see that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns in the clouds of heaven this is the judgment day this is when he judges who is saved and who is not saved that's the judgment day all right now the wrath of God is poured upon those that are not saved All right, when the wrath of God comes we that are saved are up in the air with the Lord Jesus Christ All right, when this wrath is complete we are then put down on earth a new earth with a new heaven All right, it's very simple very simple stuff and this is all throughout the Bible Right. and it took me a while to connect the dots it took a lot of reading and a lot of faith and a lot of belief and that's a lot it's a long ways to go to go from believing you are a super monkey a super evolved monkey and that putting all my hope and trust in little green men from Mars I mean, if I'm being honest with myself, that's what I believed as a teenager because I saw it in a book in junior high how we have evolved from monkeys. And so the logical progression is there are UFO aliens out there that are going to save us. That's the logical progression because there will be more 
even more evolved super monkeys than us right I mean that's logical progression and to go from that worldview to the simple truth of the Bible of the Word of God it's a long ways and I'm seeing this uh, in a lot of other people that um, they are growing and learning and their eyes are being opened more and more but I'm also at the same time seeing a lot of people not there yet alright so this is in my opinion this is the way to help people open their eyes and that is to go to Revelation 20 and show them very plainly there is no thousand year reign of Christ it's not in Revelation 20 if you can see that and then also understand that there's nothing anywhere in the Bible that talks about a thousand year reign of Christ you can't take this idea of a thousand year reign of Christ and point to another Bible verse in another book or anywhere else in the book of Revelation itself to support that idea there's no parallels right so if there's no parallels it's not there and then when you read it's not saying Jesus reigns it's saying they live and reign with Christ a thousand years now how can you say you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now all right and again this is the another mention and they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years we are reigning with him Peter calls us a holy priesthood Oh, or I'm sorry he calls us a royal priesthood and holy nation we are the nation of God we that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ he reigns in our life and therefore we reign with him he abides in us and we abide in him now uh, also a big deal is made about Satan being um, being uh, chained up for a thousand years or bound for a thousand years okay and then loosed okay so the whole reason why this is happening is explained to us that when he is loosed he will gather together the unsaved at our feet and fire will come down out of heaven from God and devour them all that's the only reason that he's mentioned as being bound for this thousand years okay people make too big of a deal out of it more than what it is more than what's written there it's very simple he's bound so that he won't gather them together and loosed so that he will gather them together and when he gathers them together we are up in the air with the Lord Jesus and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all very simple stuff and this is consistent with everything else that we're reading in the Bible alright and without getting into that uh, let's go back uh, to this fella here I haven't even started the video and there's really nothing that you're gonna there's nothing of value here I just wanna show a couple things we're gonna begin a short series dealing with the end times or the second coming of Christ all Christians profess their belief that Christ will one day return but what exactly that means and how exactly that's going to take place can vary greatly and one of those differences is what is called the thousand year reign or the millennium in the book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 through 8 it describes Satan being bound for a time of 1,000 years and in those years then Christ will reign and when those years are up Satan will be re released okay so I can agree Satan is bound for the thousand years during that time Jesus Christ reigns um, I can agree with that and then at the end of thousand years Satan is loosed like I said that is when he gathers together the unsaved this is when judgment is made between the saved and the unsaved this is the harvest time when the the tares are separated from the wheat and the wheat are taken up and the tares are burned okay 
for a period of time. He will then be defeated, and after that will come the general judgment. And well, hold on a second. Wait, him being defeated is the judgment. All right, to say that Satan is going to be defeated, that's a judgment. That's a judgment is being made that the wicked shall be cut off forever. That's judgment. The, and the saved will be, you know, separated. That's judgment. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, just like we read in Matthew 24, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that is judgment day. And the judgment is, are you saved or are you not saved? So, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the, he says, okay, the saved, we're going to gather. All right, so the angels gather together the elect. All right? And they shall gather together his elect. That's judgment. That's a judgment being made. And the great sound of the trumpet is signifies the end of of the world and remember that's the whole point of what Jesus is saying because he's asked what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the trumpet is the end of the world all right so when it's the end of the world that's when judgment is made all right there's it's not and that's when the, the all the wickedness not just you know the serpent or the Satan or the old dragon the devil whatever you want to call it that's when he's judged everybody's judged everything's judged and then when he's cut off all the wickedness is cut off forever this is the great day of the Lord this is the end of the world and the which will it which will uh, you know be the beginning of a new world right uh, a much better world so the, the promised land right the promised world so anyways let's go and the end of time now some protestants interpret this thousand years to be a time before the second coming when the world will become completely christianized now so he that there we go that's what i call the straw man argument is when you're setting up a false um, yeah, like a ghost interpretation, if you will. So what he's arguing against a ghost. So he's arguing against uh, somebody that says uh, Christianized. I, I don't even know what that means, Christianized. But the assumption that I would read into it is that um, what the world's going to be, I, you know what, I, I have no idea what that means, Christianized. What does that mean? the second coming when the world will become completely christianized no idea really honestly i don't know what that means um because I've, as i've pointed out you know as jesus points out in matthew 24 the world is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse okay where I don't think it's in this one, but you Ma you know Matthew twenty four, Mark thirteen, and Luke twenty one. They all parallel. All right, it speaks of the same thing. Now, what am I thinking of? The love of many, the love of many. I thought it said wax. I thought the word wax was in there. Oh. Man, I missed it. It was right in front of my eyes, wasn't it? And because inequity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That means it's going to get worse and worse. It's going to get colder and colder. And, you know, it's everything that he's pointing out here is telling us things are going to get worse and worse and there should be there shall be great tribulation right, in the world you shall have tribulation but be of good cheer
for I have overcome the world. Now, this idea of Christianizing, whatever that word was. Before the second coming, when the world will become completely Christianized. I don't know what that means, man. Uh, are you not a Christian? Talking about Christians. Ave Maria. I don't know. In a thousand years is interpreted figuratively. And at the end of this period of peace and righteousness, Christ... Oh, there we go. He defined it. There we go. Christianized. In a thousand years is interpreted figuratively. And at the end of this period of peace and righteousness... So, what he means is that there's going to be a thousand years of peace. Alright, so I'm going to just put an end to it. Okay, that's enough. You know, there's only... If you've ever been to like a, a sewer pit or a, a what do you call those uh, poop ponds, you know, outside of the city limits there, you go out there to the poop ponds, and the smore, especially on a hot day, and the smell is just horrid. You can only be out there for so long, and so also when people are talking about this, it's like standing out there next to them poop ponds. You can only stand out there for so long. Right. Uh, so let me point out something here for you. So during this thousand years, talks about souls of them that are beheaded. So they're people being beheaded during this thousand years. All right. And there are people dying during this thousand years. And there is no um, everlasting life uh, for everybody it's only for those that reign with Christ during this time it's only those of us that are saved during this time and during this time there is sin and there is wickedness and there is inequity and so on and so forth you cannot deny that. I mean, if you're blind to one thing, you're going to be blind to the other things, right? If you're reading this and imagining, oh, that's Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years, even though it plainly and clearly doesn't say it, you're going to be blind to the rest of this. But the rest of the dead, there are dead people during this thousand years. If you're blind to one thing, you're going to be blind to this. All right, and I, I want to open your eyes, and, and if you believe something different than what I'm teaching you, you better reconsider it, if you care about the truth at all. During this thousand years, there are dead people. There are people getting their heads cut off. There is sin and inequity and unrighteousness and filthiness of all kinds. That's why the Lord Jesus comes, and he puts an end to it all. This right here, verse 11, is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. Behold, he comes in clouds. This is judgment day when he says, okay, those of you that are saved are lifted up. Those of you that are not saved are destroyed forever. This idea that there are, there's nothing but peace and righteousness uh, everybody's Christianized or whatever and then Jesus is going to come down in the clouds of heaven and fire is going to come down from God and destroy them but destroy who? people that are righteous there's a thousand year period of peace and righteousness and God's going to destroy it and then there's going to be a, a second judgment. Who are you going to judge after you killed everybody? I'm telling you, that this zombie vision that people have makes no sense. This thousand year period can only be happening right now. Alright? You can forget about your zombie vision. Just and Look, if it helps, play it out, man. Think it out. Think it out. Uh, you know through a logical progression 
All right. Just and admit, be honest with yourself. You believe zombies are going to run around the earth after Jesus comes? I mean, that's what you're saying. Is that after the Lord Jesus comes, there's going to be people getting beheaded. They're going to be dead people. And they're, I mean, yeah, it's a contradiction to say that there's going to be peace and righteousness and there's going to be dead people at the same time. All right. It's a zombie world that you imagined and it makes no sense at all. Alright, so enough of the poop pond stuff. Have a good day.